when Nigerians get to India, your bill is different. They build Nigerians differently because we, they know we are gullible and we are desperately in need of that medical. They don't waste time. It's three days visa, you get your visa because they know you are coming to spend to, come, to spend plenty, uh, plenty money. And they use it to develop their economy. So they are so smart. Once you come into India for treatment, you don't, they don't try, as much as possible, they don't admit you in the hospitals. So what they do is, they have partnership with people that have residence, houses. So like, in these houses now, people that build houses around, so they are, is it outpatients you call them? So you will launch in a close by house, apartment that has kitchen and everything. So you'll be coming to the hospital from there. So they have created, they, they, they turn into a full business empire that grows their economy. Now, when we talk about this performance management, a lot has to be done. So let me pick our mind. I want to do a mind um, recalibration. So I'm going to show something on the screen now. I need you to concentrate. I want to know, I want to see the first person. Can you look deeper? I love this a lot in the sense that I need that to show us this because everything we've been saying, everything others have been saying, everything I'm going to say, the first thing that is going to come to our mind is it's impossible. Usually, the first thing your mind sees is the impossibility that it cannot happen. So there's that likelihood to feel that this cannot happen. But the countries we are all traveling to today, so I read in the news today that the US wants to add us to one of the countries that I'll be so glad, actually. I've been the number one person that I've been asking for US to just ban us not to come. In fact, I just wish we can be banned from traveling out of this country just for two years. <laughs> just two years, and I can bet you with you, everything will fall into place. You don't believe so? Everything we fall into place. It's because we have alternatives. That's why nothing is happening. They should ban us. I would be so glad. We, we should just also ban them anyways, but... <laughs> 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 they will be affected more because they have money to come and pick in Nigeria. They have easy money to get, so they should ban us. It's not a big deal. I'm not, I'm not scared of it. I'm not one of those that want to relocate anyways. So I'm not, I don't, I don't give a hoot if they ban us. I love Nigeria. I'm going to stay in this country. If I travel out of this country, the moment I spend more than two weeks is a problem for me. I can't stand it. Unfortunately, because I don't know how to eat other food apart from my amala. So that's my number one problem. So I suffer a lot anytime I travel. I come lean because I don't know how to eat all those other foods. But I love original amala. I mean, my daddy there is giving me thumbs up. I love my amala. I don't know how to eat spaghetti, salad. <laughs> I mean, this was an awful. Let me eat normal food and, and be happy. So I'm showing us this to actually pick our minds. Now, this... Now, there is something that we also always joke and play with, and it is time. And in everything that you are talking about, I saw the issue of time coming up a lot of times in things that we do. But we don't pay attention to time. We waste time because time means nothing to us. And you know the funniest thing, we talk about time management all the time. But in actual fact, you can't manage time. You can't manage anything that does not appreciate or depreciate. You can't. You can only manage what you do in time, in a particular time. But time is just constant. But it moves faster than you think. How many of you know about Formula One? The car race. How long do you think it takes to change the four tires in the Formula One race? Five, ten seconds, thirty seconds? No. It's actually, the record is actually 1.92 seconds to change four tires. 1.92 seconds, that's currently the record. So, 
it's usually between two seconds and three seconds. If you change your tire higher than three seconds, you're not likely to win the race. So, how do we bring that into what we run? The speed of response to patients can save a lot of lives, can save a lot of things. These are the things we need to begin to look at. We need to start looking at that model. Because performance management is about improvement, doing things the right way. And when I was why I was particular about a government representative being here, someone from Ministry of Health, because they are the ones that waste the whole time of this world. You have a meeting in the government in any ministry, just cancel the whole the whole activity for that day. There's nothing reasonable that can happen to you that day because time means nothing to them. Okay. Now, in the concept of performance management, there's a lot of things that happen. All right? So I'll be making also some few exercises in my explanation because I don't really like giving lecture talk, talk, talk too much. Okay? But I hope one day we'll be able to do a lot more study training. So when we say that, we want to know. Now, there is performance management, there is performance measurement. If you look at this question that I asked, there are some that are not, that are just um, related to performance management only. Which one of them? <laughs> you, you saw the answer already? Yes. <laughs> now, you know why I had to do this? Because as hospital owners, medical doctors, a lot of work depends on you because you need to manage things. And management is bigger than measurement. So measurement, performance measurement, is a subset of performance management. So that we need to understand. But before you talk about measurement and management, how many of us have a strategic focus for our hospital? But have you come together to say that this is the vision, the mission, and our strategy for the next five years. If you have not done it, then this is the time to begin to plan deliberately, not just making things happen the way it is just going to happen. You need to take control of what happens, not events telling you what to happen. I don't know if I'm making sense. Strategic planning is key in everything that we do. So there has to be that strategic plan. To be able to say that we are moving from this level to this level in one year, in two years, in three years. And you can come back to appraise how well you have moved, what you have achieved in that time. So that things don't just happen by coincidence. It happens consciously because you plan for it. One of the things we don't do in this country is actually planning. Our planning is so shallow that even the government, I mean, I see a lot of beautiful, lovely strategic document done by the government, but we still battle within three years strategy as a country. Where countries like UAE is having a 25 year strategic plan. And they're already talking about the way hospitals are going to be in 25 years time. Artificial intelligence is taking over. Everything, a lot of things are taking over. You know, I saw a, um, I saw a an equipment in India that is used in transferring blood platelets. So, um, so this Nigerian patient in in Luth, they will have to take blood from about th two three people extract the platelets before they can transfuse the uh, platelets. In India, all they have to do is um, they take blood from one person. So blood goes out from you, it extracts the platelets, it comes back into your body system. So no blood is lost. Just one person, and that is all. Because your body can produce the platelets faster, so it goes out and it comes back in, and it's done. And these are simple things that could be done in itself. So when you talk about it, the first thing we need to do 
that I need our hospitals to do is to sit down and develop a strategic focus. What you want your hospital to look like. You need to have a strategic plan. How you want to improve on it. If you don't have... Okay, let me give us an instance. How important it is. If somebody in your home wakes up in the morning, goes to the bathroom, have his bath, dresses up, and as he's going out, where are you going? I don't know. But you're going out, yes. Where are you going to? I don't know. Are you going to sit down and be looking at the person? But really, what are you going to do? <laughs> that person is going nowhere. It's the same thing with the business that we run. It's a business. Let us be frank with ourselves. So you cannot be running it without a direction or where you want to be in the next five years, at least minimum. So you need to take that conscious effort and that is when you can then begin to measure it. You can then begin to look at, this is where we want to be. You can, you can start to check about it. Are we there? Are we not there? That's the measurement. I wake up in the morning, January 1st, and I tell myself, I weigh 100 kg, climb on the scale so that I weigh 100 kg and I want to lose weight. If by December 31st, I weigh 99, have I failed or passed? I have passed. Because all I told myself is I want to lose weight. And I lost one kg. I did not specify what weight I want to lose. And that happens to us a lot as well. That happens to us a lot. And success always comes by coincidence and we cannot sustain it. So when things are not working, we want to go back to the drawing board, like Nigerian football. Every time we go back to the drawing board. Now, execution of strategy is a key factor. So don't just have it and dump it inside your drawer. Don't keep it to yourself. Execute it. Run it through. Begin to measure and take management decision. It's only when you measure. You want to lose weight. You climb on the scale at the end of January. You find out that you've not lost anything. What do you do? You find out, is it that I'm eating too much? Or I'm not exercising? Like I found out for myself. So I changed my style to riding bicycle to the office. That okay, that is a guaranteed exercise for me. That at least three times in a week, I must ride bicycle to and fro the office. Because Degas says it's a madman's place. So. Focus towards something. You'll be repeating what you discussed the last minute. And meeting is one of the greatest time wasters that I know. Sincerely, you waste a lot of time. I'm sure when you're in an association, they will do certification of coro, agenda of the day, minute of the last meeting, matters arising. Uh, people will now start editing the minute. My name was not spelled correctly. A is missing in my name. So after two hours, we now go to matter uh, business of. But you need to plan yourself so that it's a lot focused about what you want to do and what you want to achieve. Now, what is performance measurement in itself? Performance measurement is a sub-process of performance management that deals with tracking and evaluation. You need to be able to track things. Your customer wait time, your response time, your everything. I mean, like my brother was explaining, your lead time in actually stocking up and all those things. You need to be able to measure them. But we still make decisions based on data, but how authentic is the data? How many of us um, remember tally number, the era of tally number in the banking sector, where you need to get the tally number and wait till it's your turn? But today, how many of us, okay, is there anybody that does not have this phone, mobile um, application, I mean, your bank mobile application on your phone, anyone? That you don't have the app on your phone. Okay. So it means that all of us stand here do not enjoy going to the banking hall anymore. Am I right? It has become seamless. 
So what makes us not to be able to develop such application for hospitals that I can actually make appointment going to the app? I can actually book appointments, do everything, even before. So by the time I'm showing up, your appointment is already booked. I mean, so many of the things that we are doing can become a lot seamless. Can become very seamless and actions can be taken easily. It should get to that point where we can do all those things, but data needs to be available and data is missing in this country. The truth is, even hospitals don't share data with each other. So it becomes a lot difficult when you go to, I mean, that doesn't usually happen here anyway. You go to this hospital A, by the time you get to hospital B, uh, I mean, your treatment does not start from where, where it ended in the other one because there's no central um, record system. So even if you collapse and you take it to the hospital, there's no data that shows whether this person is allergic to anything because they are actually in a state of coma. They cannot even use your fingerprints to see that, okay, this is this person's ailment. So we feel that some data are supposed to be kept to ourselves, but there's no country that is going to develop. So I'm challenging you, those that are private hospital owners, you need to start that serious collaboration. There are some data that can be centralized for the benefit of the people in itself. Because those data are key. The sad part is we do the same hospital sometimes. I mean, I had a nasty experience. After my wife first surgery, before we left Nigeria, she went back to the hospital the third day. And you know, OK, there's a particular process. Maybe you can explain that process to me. Why I go to the hospital today, I see Dr. A. So I come back tomorrow. I'm going to see Dr. B. The third day, if I come back, if I come five times, I am seeing five different doctors. As far as I'm concerned, I don't see it as being efficient. So what happened when we got to India is you are giving your doctor, and that's the doctor that will see you from beginning to the end. So they have an oncology meeting where your case is presented, and all other experts will review every case. But it's a doctor that will come and communicate to you. If anything is complex, your doctor will speak to another expert. But your doctor is still your doctor. So there is that level of, he knows the level of your case. And that is why people prefer to go to private hospitals. So when they get there, they will insist, we we'll always insist that we want to see Dr. Lambaja. That doctor is not available. If it's not critical, you find out that the patient will say, I'll come back when he is available. Why? Because the person knows your history. And you just want the person to be consistent. And whatever we are doing here, some of us are consultants in the public sector. We need to think about changing a lot of all, a lot of all these processes. That makes the whole thing very cumbersome in itself. So you have to do things that allows you to track your data. I it always insist on data because I found out that what has helped organizations, countries to improve is data.